Today we're talking about the electronic shutter. Hey fellow photographers, what did you shoot today? So today we're talking about the electronic shutters and there are two different types. We talked about focal plane shutters and leaf shutters before, those were mechanical shutters. Now, digital cameras can still take those focal plane and leaf shutters and use them. However, they have the added advantage of an electronic shutter, which uses properties of the digital sensors within the camera to make exposure. Now, I said there are two types, kind of like focal plane and leaf, we have two types of electronic shutters. One is a global shutter, usually a CCD, and the other one is a rolling shutter usually a CMOS sensor. Now, the reason this is important is because they have different trade-offs in terms of pros and cons, just like everything in photography that we've been talking about. So what is a CCD sensor? So a CCD stands for Charged Coupled Device, and it offers one set of advantages and disadvantages over the CMOS sensor, which is a complementary metal oxide semiconductor sensor. Now, both of these are digital sensors, and I'm going to throw out a lot of terminology that applies to digital imaging that we haven't really talked about, and because we've been talking about you know, shutters and, and apertures and that kind of stuff, which is pretty much universal to, to cameras, film, or digital. So when I talk about the electronic shutters, and I don't really explain fully what digital sensors do, don't get too caught up in the details. Just think of that as sort of a foreshadowing for future videos about digital cameras. But essentially, both of these, I've drawn these in, in a similar fashion. It's a grid of 16 squares, four by four. Let's just say, you know, it's four by four pixels, very small sensor. You know, we have, you know, megapixels, millions of pixels in our sensors nowadays. But for sake of simplicity, let's just say it's 16 pixel sensor, both of them, right? Now, digital sensors are usually made from silicone. Silicone can conduct, you know, can conduct electricity in a way that uh, we can take advantage of the photoelectric effect. And the reason that these colored squares are on here are due to sort of a Bayer filter layer so that your camera can sort of interpret color because what a camera sensor really does is measure how bright the scene is by measuring the number of electrons that are collected on each pixel by you know, looking at its voltage. So this is, these are all kinds of electronic components and, and, and sciency stuff that just is beyond the scope of this exact video, but we're gonna cover it in future videos. For now, all we have to know is that just like film or whatever else, there's something at the back of the camera that collects light. And the fact that it's in this pattern is, is something that the, the camera, digital camera will use to render the final image. Now, like I said, these sensors may look the same, but the way, the way they handle data and exposure is, is very different. So, how does a CCD sensor handle data? Well, a CCD sensor, for the most part, can be considered a sort of global shutter. So what happens is, we have some exposure, we have some light that comes in, hits the sensor like this, and charge starts to build up on each one of these pixels. So we have lots of charge that builds up, and the, and the more charge that builds up on a certain area, the, the brighter the, uh, the image is in that area. So lots of little things get excited here, and the key is we can expose the CMOS sensor the same way, you know, we hit light, you know, it hits the sensor, and then charge also builds up on all these different things. So we have lots of excited silicone atoms shedding electrons, taking full advantage of the photoelectric effect. So we have, you know, we have a charge on, on the, the sensor from the exposure, from the light entering the camera. Now, the key with a global shutter is that essentially all of this exposure is read at the same time. Now, I have to clarify that because what really happens is there is a part of the sensor, let's just say it's down here, and what happens is row by row, these electrons and these, these charges get shifted down by alternating currents in the, in the circuitry of this sensor. And this is called a serial shift register. So what happens is like the first row of here, you know, the charge collected from each one of this, this first row gets moved down, sort of shifted down to the serial shift register. And then it comes out of here in series, which means in order, to a capacitor and an amplifier, and eventually it gets handled by the digital camera. So what happens is 
Each one of these rows gets shifted down and then read in order by the camera. But the key is that all of those same electrons, so after this row is done, it gets shifted down, read by the camera, this row moves down again, shifted, you know, everything moves down one at a time, gets read by the camera. But the key is that the exposure of every single one of these pixels occurred at one time, which means it's a global shutter. So all the light comes in, and then it takes some time, you know, we're talking fractions of milliseconds here, but then it gets read. All of this stuff gets read in order from the same point in time. So the exposure was made all at the same time. It gets read in order, which takes, you know, a little bit of time. And then the, the picture comes out the other end after some signal processing. So why would this sensor be advantageous over this sensor? What are the pros and cons? Well, in this, in this type of electronic shutter, like I said, you're getting that global shutter, which means everything's exposed at the same time. You have, don't have to worry about rolling shutter artifacts or your, you know, your, you know, your trees being sideways or if you're moving or if you're moving really fast. Now the problem is, like I said, this is a little bit slower because it has to shift each one of these rows each time and then read them one by one. So it is slower between shots, between exposures. But because the signal is amplified at the end, there's only one amplifier, you get really clean images and sort of no, no additional noise. So there's not a lot of noise that comes into this sensor. So this produces really clean images, free from noise, global shutter, everything's read at the same time. You don't have to worry about the rolling shutter effect like you did with focal plane shutters and this other guy over here that we're gonna talk about in a second. So that's all you have to remember for the CCD sensor. Now, is CCD used commercially uh, for, for amateur, Photographers, usually not, because all of this shifting of pixels, all of that or shifting of, of charges from different pixels down, reading them one at a time, you know, it doesn't give you fast refresh cycles between shots, and it actually consumes a lot of voltage. So the advantages of a CCD sensor are low noise, but you do it at the expense of it's slower and it's voltage intensive. Now, so when did this come along, this sort of CMOS sensor? The CMOS sensor differs. Instead of this serial, this, this bus here that sort of harbors all these things, each individual pixel has a capacitor and an amplifier attached to it. So each one of these has its own individual amplifier, which is usually drawn as a triangle. You get the idea. And then what happens is that each of these rows, let's just say that they're going this way. It doesn't matter which way they go but they're read in parallel. So all this circuitry comes here and this entire row is read at once because you don't have to wait for the signal to get down here and amplified because each individual pixel is doing the work. They're getting the signal amplified at the, at the pixel level and then you can send, you know, like in this case, four packets of data down to the processor to get your image. Now, why is this advantageous? Now, even though each one of these has its own thing, you know, its own amplifier capacitor combo, and has a lot of circuitry going on, this actually draws less power because you're doing everything in parallel and the voltages across each of these pixels is smaller. So it's less power consumption. You don't have to worry about running out of your camera battery as often with these kinds of sensors, which is, makes it good for sort of practical consumer applications. It's also faster because you're gonna read, you're essentially reading, in this case, row by row. At a, you know, you're doing it in parallel, so you're reading a row at a time, whereas here you're reading a row at a time, but it's a row at a time and then one by one. So this row of four comes down and then each pixel gets read through the system. Here we're doing four at a time in parallel. So one, two, three, four iterations. Here it's 16 iterations. So it's faster. So the cycle time between uh, exposures is much quicker. And the reason that you have to cycle this exposure is because if there's still charge left on the sensor, that's like stray light that, that the sensor thinks is there. So after all of this has been read, it has to be cleared before the next exposure comes into play. So it's faster because it's reading in parallel. However, because each individual pixel has its own sort of amplification process, you introduce a lot more noise because you know small variations in, in noise, and you, you get a little bit of randomness thrown in there, but instead of doing everything at once, Right? So you, you read everything at once at the end, you're applying basically noise one time, here you're applying noise every single pixel. Even though it's a you know, smaller voltage, you're basically applying it 
and, and, and different random variations will cause random artifacts of noise within each of these pixels. So you're going to get a little bit less clean of an image. And again, because you're reading row by row, not the entire thing at once, you're going to get the rolling shutter effect. Now, what does that mean? Well, again, advantages and disadvantages. So most, you know, consumer cameras like these DSLRs, right? This is this Canon camera. Canon is known for their CMOS sensor. So there's a CMOS sensor in here, but it still has a mechanical shutter in front of it. Same thing with this mirrorless camera, right? There's no, there's no mirror or, or, or way to view this except for looking on the back, you know, sort of live view. But this also has a actual focal plane shutter in front of it, a mechanical shutter. But consumer products like your cell phone, you know, there's not a lot of room to put a shutter inside a, a camera like this. So it takes advantage of this CMOS sensor, which has a rolling shutter. Now the camera I'm filming on is a micro third, four thirds camera, also has a CMOS sensor, which means it suffers from rolling shutter, but it's in video mode right now. So what it's doing is it's sort of refreshing this, you know, line by line, you know, hundreds or I don't know how many thousands of times uh, per second. I mean, you know, the frame rate is, I'm filming in, in 30 frames a second. So I guess 30 times a second, it's refreshing this image. You know, higher cameras, the high speed cameras can go much faster than that. Now, I can get behind the camera here and I can actually try and demonstrate the rolling shutter effect because if I move the camera back and forth, you know, relatively quickly, if you notice, see how the lines of the blackboard aren't up and down? So if I move them slowly, right, they should stay relatively straight up and down. But because the sensor is reading at different times, and sorry if this is making you dizzy, I'm just trying to prove a point. But because of that, they bend. And because they bend, you know, that's the rolling shutter problem. So the question is, what digital camera should I get? And should I really care about sensors? Well, the key is that sort of CCD came around first because the technology wasn't, wasn't there to get all this wiring and all this, all this complexity for the CMOS sensor. Then CMOS took over and it's kind of like a back and forth between the two. But they have advantages and disadvantages, right? So that you just have to be aware of them. And like I said, if you're filming fast stuff with this camera, you have to be aware of that rolling shutter, which you can, you know, you can try and correct in post, but you know, it can be an issue. For a given generation of sensors, usually the CCD is going to give you cleaner images. So for, for stills, you might, you know, consider a CCD sensor. Now, most commercial cameras use a CMOS sensor. So you may not have that option, but if you have, you know, if you're buying like a digital back for like a Hasselblad camera, some of them are CCD and some of them are CMOS. So it's just something to take in consideration and those, that's how those shutters work given the sort of electronic components of the shutter. Now, again, like I said, they can use mechanical components. There could be a focal plane shutter, just like in the Canon DSLR mirrorless camera I showed you. So there, there can be a focal plane shutter in here, you know, achieves the same effect. Or there could be a leaf shutter in front of this guy, you know, opens and closes. But the electronic shutters and in, in purely electronic shutter cameras, or if you're shooting in silent mode in your mirrorless camera, which does not use the shutter, so you don't make a lot of noise, this is what's happening. This is what's going on inside your camera. It's either reading in parallel, like this, one row at a time, or it's taking the entire thing in and then processing it row by row and then pixel by pixel, so in a serial fashion. A little bit slower, a little bit quicker, a little less noise, a little more noise, more power consumption, less power consumption. And that's the trade-off when it comes to digital photography. So we've talked about all three kinds of shutter, focal plane shutter, leaf shutter, electronic shutter. Next, we have to explore what exactly is going on with the shutter speed and how it affects the aesthetics of your images no matter what your device you're capturing it on. So I know that was a really high level look at digital sensors and kind of how they affect the images you take, whether it's a global shutter or it's a rolling shutter, different types of sensors. It sounds like magic. And, and honestly, it, it's amazing what the digital technology has, has come to. But it all comes back to the fundamentals and understanding you know, what's really happening on the inside of your camera in order to take advantage or at least know the limitations of the gear you're using.
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, a comment if you want to see more. If I mentioned something about digital sensors that you have never heard of or sounds interesting, let me know and I'll prioritize those videos when I get to the sort of the digital section of, of these videos. And, you know, as always, happy shooting.